Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about different messaging patterns in event driven architectures. Let's start, let's start by talking about what are event driven architectures, right? So event driven architecture enables real time or eventual communication across distributed systems using messages or events. That's how I like to define event driven architectures and how messaging can be used to enable them. Basically, if you want to, if you have an environment where there are multiple systems or multiple applications in a distributed fashion, and if you want to communicate between each other, one way is to obviously implement APIs synchronously. But whenever an application or a service uh, grows and there are multiple services that are involved in the decision, ma decision making process, at that point of time, uh, you might want to consider event driven architectures. And to do that, you will need some kind of a message or event as a communication mechanism between the systems, which is why the communication can be real time or uh, it can be eventual or near real time. We are going to talk about five such messaging patterns which are commonly used. Let's look at the patterns that we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about asynchronous request response, concurrent consumers, priority queue, choreography, and publish subscribe patterns. So let's start with the async request response uh, pattern. In this pattern, the front end is decoupled from the back end business logic, right? Let's look at the pattern. Let's, let's look at the architecture, how it is. If you notice this architecture, look at it closely. The front end is calling the API uh, at point one, right? But the API, the backend service is responding with a status. That is, it is in progress, right? Uh, if you want to see a HTTP status, it can be a HTTP status 202, which is accepted, right? Uh, that means that it basically gives a state back that we are working on something. And if once the job is done, you can again call some other API to get the data, right? In this kind of a scenario, when the front end calls the back end, obviously there can be cases where the front end has to wait, the back end business logic might take a lot of time. So use these kind of scenarios basically require this pattern to be implemented. The back end service then publishes a message asynchronously, and that message is consumed by another service which is performing the core business logic. And once the business logic is performed, then the front end again calls the status API, right? Like if you see point number six, it calls the other microservice or other backend service to get the actual data. And then that microservice responds back with the data. So basically it's an asynchronous request response model where the first call API call does not actually fetch the result. It's basically a job that was uh, started. And then maybe after some time, the data is available for the front end to be used, right? So this is an async uh, request response pattern. Let's look at the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefits are obviously, like I mentioned, the client doesn't have to wait for long running backend business logic to complete, right? Uh, because you, you are sending the client is the front end is sending a call to the backend service and the backend service is immediately doing something and then responding back you know, the status that, okay, we have accepted the task, but we haven't yet completed to know the completed status and to get the ultimate data, you can call after some time or according to your polling logic. So that is one of the benefit. The front end is not tied to the back end, right? Uh, this is useful when there are callback facilities such as webhooks and all are not present. Most front end technologies and all have webhooks and web sockets and all, which can be used for these kind of patterns wherever, whenever you are doing a call to the back end service, there can be a callback if there is a uh, in progress job that was uh, that was created. But if that is not available, that is the time when this kind of pattern can be used. However, there are obviously drawbacks. Uh, drawbacks are uh, the client has to possibly implement continuous continuous polling, right? I mean, how does the front end know that the second backend service has completed the job to so now again, go back and fetch the data, right? So that's a problem. These kind of situations, in these kind of situations, you also implement heartbeat mechanisms where you are continuously polling uh, from a system to get the data. You don't know when the status is ready to get the data. So, which basically can also increase the load on that backend system, right? If that job takes 15 minutes and if you have a retried polling logic of say every five seconds, so you are going to have almost 180 calls without fetching a data, right? So that is a drawback of this pattern. Now let's look at the next pattern, 
which is concurrent consumers pattern. What is it? This pattern, basically in this pattern, parallel processing of independent messages is enabled, right? Uh, it can be confusing. So let's look at the architecture, how it is. So there is a client and there is a service, right? But the client is publishing messages parallelly to different, say, queues or topics. And the messages from those two queues are being pulled parallelly by multiple threads of the backend service, right? So what it is basically doing? So the backend service is getting the data from the client in an async fashion, but getting the data parallelly, the multiple messages and events that it is getting at the same time parallelly. Like for example, let's take an example. Say if you are building an e-commerce application, right? And if you want to, whenever there is an order placed, your order service comes into picture and it tries to do certain things, right? Procurement or all those things. If that is the case, every time an order is placed, you want to get the order service start its job, right? Now, if the order service is a sequential mechanism, once it is working on a request, it cannot process another request, that will block all your further order requests, right? That is not probably how we want to implement that. If you want to implement, obviously placing an order has nothing to do with another order. One order might not have another, uh, nothing, anything to do with another order, right? So you can process that that order service can parallelly accept a lot of order requests at the same time, right? So your backend service, which is the order service, which can implement multiple polar threads or whatever processes, which can parallelly pull from the order queue, for example right like there can be multiple queues and it can parallelly pull and parallelly each of those messages which are basically independent order requests can be served by the backend service or some instance of the backend service right so basically in this pattern you are splitting the processing of messages uh, parallelly right you are not doing a sequential processing so obviously we can understand there are various benefits it provides high scalability yes uh, parallel and independent processing of messages or tasks one is not dependent on the other so which means that if one message fails or if one order request in this example fails or something others are not impacted right you know, it is very scalable and elastic uh, it can accommodate uh, change in demand right if you have more peak of orders right you can obviously scale to number of more threads you can scale the number of more queues to publish more messages or you can scale down also to reduce one queue or maybe uh, remove two threads or something like that. So it is very elastic in, and scalable in that way. What are the drawbacks? This as you can understand one service having multiple threads and there are multiple queues so management and operations is increases. It can be a bit of a difficulty in managing all these infrastructure uh, for one basic service to work. Uh, it can't work if the tasks are dependent on each other like yes if one order request is dependent on another order request then you basically cannot parallelly process all of those right and it also doesn't work if you have a specific sequencing or a ordering because there can be one order with one t-shirt for example right but there can be another order of 1500 chairs or something like that uh, now if there is a sequence in uh, sequencing that is needed in this case, you might not need a sequence. Those are two independent cases, right? Uh, so that is where this concurrent consumers can be useful. But if there was a sequence that is needed, then in that case, this will not work. Now let's look at the third pattern, which will basically make this sequencing or the priority kind of a important thing, which is priority queue pattern. Let's look at what priority queue pattern is. Basically, the messages are processed based on priority. Uh, different, all messages in the queue might not have the same priority. There might be some with high priority, some with lower priority. So how does this work? If you notice at this diagram, the client is publishing messages accordingly, right? It is publishing messages with certain priority. The priority queue is responsible for setting the messages in the order of the priority. Right. So if you notice the priority queue, it currently has four, three and one message number. Now the client, if it publishes message number two, automatically the priority queue is going to replace the second message with number two between one and three. So that two is consumed after one and not after four. Right. And consumers receive the messages based on priority. Right. Like you can understand this has several benefits and there are multiple use cases where this can be used. This is obviously a simple architecture. These are some of the benefits. It's a simple architecture uh, 
it's best works best to segregate high and low priority of task handling like i mentioned uh, there are multiple ways to implement this you can also for example implement three queues or four queues here right and each queue is a priority queue like uh, all messages number one will go to q1 all messages number two will go to q2 and obviously q1 has higher priority than q2 instead of this one queue processing all uh, messages together and reprioritizing them you can separate them by different queues right you can also separate them by different services which consumer is actually working on higher priority messages and which consumers are working on lower priority uh, messages right so there there are several segregations that are possible and various ways to implement the priority based on how you want to how your product demands are uh, however there are few drawbacks also for this uh, if you are implementing this pattern obviously priority a skew in priority can overload one consumer this is basically you might have a median of uh, 50% 50% high priority low priority messages right or maybe somewhere around that ballpark but if say you have 99% high priority messages and all of a sudden only one person low priority messages right and if you, both your high priority consumer and low priority consumers are at same scale then one is receiving 99 times more than the other message the number of messages right so how do you handle so that that priority skew can be a problem so accordingly you have to design the system and this also depends on the client setting the message priority right uh, the entire message priority is dependent on how the client is putting the priority which means some code who has some kind of a logic to set the priority before sending the message to the queue yeah, uh, if there is a code bug in the client uh, logic, then nothing can be done uh, by the consumer because the consumer is unaware what the actual priority of the message should be. So that can at times cause cause bugs and uh, my detection might be a bit of a problem. Right. The next pattern that we are going to look at is choreography pattern. Choreography pattern. I've also spoken a bit about choreography pattern in the in the data management video. You uh, you can look at that uh, video in the in my YouTube channel about data management patterns and which is part of the Saga pattern. But what is choreography? Choreography is each service participates in the workflows decision making. There we had seen based on how the data will be flowing. Here we are going to see how the pattern is basically. So let's look at. So your client is publishing messages to a message broker right and there are multiple services who are consuming from the message broker right so that is a basic choreography the basically the each service is working towards the workflows the, or the entire tasks decision making process right if you see there are double ended arrows between the services and the message broker which means that there is no one service who is di dictating how the workflow will be right each service independently is taking the message doing some task completing it setting the status the next service is pulling the message starting from that part of the task completing it again putting it back to the queue so it's based on a message broker and the choreography of all the services now there are benefits and drawbacks to this also is this is the benefits let's look at the benefits first this is easily extendable as you can see you can add new services it's not adding a new service or removing one service uh, removing can be a bit difficult but adding a new service is pretty easy because you don't have another dependency on another service is just a queue uh, there is no central dependency on an orchestrator like i mentioned an orchestrator is where you have another service who is calling the shots for the entire workflow but in this case each of those services are participating in the decision making process right uh, and this is also elastic right it works best for serverless workflows where each of these services can be a short-lived independent lambda functions or something like that right who can do their job and fire and forget kind of a mechanism so those kind of uh, uh, patterns or architectures can be implemented using a choreography pattern but there are few drawbacks uh, drawbacks are message recovery and rollback can be complex in case of a service failure as you can understand all services participate in the entire workflows decision making process so if one service fails then which basically means that something has to be done with the entire message because other services working on top of that services success will make the entire workflow succeed if one service fails then that will basically fail the entire workflow so which is which can be difficult to implement which is the next drawback also like uh, all services participate in the uh, in the resiliency of the entire workflow and it 
also at times can be difficult to implement right and it can be complex in case of service failures now let's look at the next pattern which is possibly the most commonly used pattern in the industry is a publish subscribe pattern right publish subscribe pattern is mainly when you want to broadcast messages right when you want to broadcast messages or announce messages to multiple consumers right uh, without any tight coupling between the consumer or the subscriber or the publisher right so those two services are independent they are not connected to each other let's look at how that works that basically works like you can have multiple publishers publishing messages or events to a topic and then there can be independent subscribers who are who are consuming the messages from that topic right they are subscribing to that topic to consume messages from that topic this pattern has several benefits and this is also a very commonly used pattern in in the industry let's talk about the benefits uh, the like i mentioned the communication between multiple services are irrespective of the consumer's availability right like so the publisher can publish the messages to the or the events to a topic but need not have to depend whether the consumer one consumer is available or there is anyone who is receiving the message it's not the job of the publisher's responsibility to 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 know that right so they can just publish and forget it is completely asynchronous there is no real time response needed whether the message again is being subscribed and being consumed by anyone or not is not a responsibility of the publisher to know the producers and cons uh, consumers and the subscribers are completely decoupled they can be anyone and there can be multiple ways to implement this like you can have a your consumers can be a push message like an sms or an email or a normal person notification to a to a system or to another another uh, system in itself right so it can be a person it can be an application the subscribers can be anyone there is no dependency on how each consumer is implemented like i mentioned it the consumer or the subscriber can be a, a, a email client right you might want to just send that message from that topic to an email right you just want to email or you just want to send a sms notification right all those things are possible even if you have multiple services who are subscribers of this topic each subscriber might be in a different programming language it doesn't matter how they are implemented and how they are handling the message independently right so it's, it's one is not dependent on the other so that kind of segregation is possible and this is like i mentioned is best for notifications or announcement kind of use cases right however there are few drawbacks here also uh, one is obviously this is the eventually consistent model uh, because uh, you the publishers are publishing and the subscribers are subscribing from that topic there is no synchronous call path right so if you have a api that is sitting in front of one of your subscribers right that api will get the data eventually in a eventually consistent model right because that subscriber is dependent on the message being available in the topic and that is dependent on the publisher publishing that message to the topic right so once the pub message is published to the topic when it is available it will be subscribed by the subscriber and consumed and then worked upon to make the data available to the api so it is an eventual consistent model which is basically can also increase some kind of a uh, latency to your apis and since this is completely decoupled uh, the debugging and testing can be difficult like whether the message was published correctly whether it was it was subscribed correctly there is a topic in between did it get lost at times for these kind of mechanisms we also uh, implement dead letter queues and those kind of failures wherever there is a failure in the messaging or in the in the main infrastructure either in the queue or in the topic then that message should not be lost right there should be a, a failover mechanism from where you can also redrive messages if there is a failure to recover kind of use cases but overall uh, debugging and testing this in this entire distributed system end to end can be uh, a bit difficult so these were the messaging patterns of an event driven architecture hopefully this was useful